friends, uh, I am Dr. Jitendra Joshi, the Global President for GIBF, Global India Business Forum. Uh, today we are uh, at the Embassy of uh, Ghana, the official name is Republic of Ghana. And I am very happy today we are with uh, High Commissioner of Republic of Ghana in India, Mr. Koku Asoma Chiramma. How are you, sir? I'm good. And you? I am good, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Uh, Republic of Ghana is a West African country. And this is one of the very beautiful country because lush greens, uh, jungles are there, uh, different animals. And apart from that, lot of beaches. So Ghana is very, very beautiful country in Africa. The name Ghana is taken from the ancient Ghana. You see, we had um, the Songhai Empire, we have the uh, Mali Empire and others. So Ghana happened to be one of the empires. So when we had independence, originally the name of Ghana, the present Ghana used to be Gold Coast. So okay. We decided to go for the old name in 1957, okay. and that became the present Ghana. Okay. Uh, friends, uh, Ghana was got the independence in 1957 uh, from the British's rule. Uh, if you talk about the Ghana population, it's around 32 million population. Uh, one fifth is the Muslim population, and most of the population uh, here uh, uh, is Christian, yeah, Catholic. Yeah. No, we're not only Catholic. Um, we largely we say that they are Christians, but if you want to break it down to various denominations, you see that uh, the Christians dominate. And then, uh, apart from Christianity, we have other religions like Islamic religion, then we have Africa traditional religion. When we say Africa traditional religion, we are referring that do not believe in Islamic religion neither do they believe in Christianity, okay. but they have, they have their own way of worship. Okay. Like in India here, you may have other sects uh, worshiping God through other means. Right. It could be by means of, uh, you have various forms of religion. You have Hare Krishnas over here, you have uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism. Yes, that is what is happening in Ghana. But Christianity largely dominates. Dominated. Yeah. Sir, uh, out of this 32 million population, now the Indian population is also step by step increasing. I think uh, as per our number, around 10,000 uh, Indians are there. And out of that, I think the 3,000 got the nationality of uh, Ghana. Uh, Ghana, the population as of today is 32 point two million yes. and it is growing uh, i believe the next census will push us far and we contemplate that we are likely to get to about 35 million okay yes uh, the population is exponentially growing uh, but there are some difficulties here and there which uh, in my personal opinion i may uh, talk about climate change that is affecting the entire world. It also affects Ghana as well. Yeah. And that brings our gross domestic product down. Okay. Uh, we are not in a position to cope with, okay. unlike the advanced countries. So Ghana, like other developing countries, are also suffering in terms of this. Yeah. India is no exception in that circumstance, but you may be higher uh, in terms of development, in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of transport and all. We are low. We are trying to pick and we are learning a lot from India. And we are soliciting investors from here to go and invest in Ghana in that direction. 
Sir, Ghana and India are having a really good relationship for last many years actually and we have uh, also started good bilateral trade for last many years. And uh, specifically when we talk about the uh, micro, small and medium sector businesses, there is a huge potential to grow in India as well as in Ghana. So we just want to know about your opinion about uh, what needs to be uh, done to improve the bilateral relationship between India and Ghana specifically. Thank you so much. Uh, Ghana and India's bilateral relationship had long started from our first president's relationship with your first prime minister, Nero, and it has grown from strength to strength to date. Yeah. Uh, as I talk to you now, we have about 10,000 plus Indians in Ghana yeah. doing various businesses, some in uh, cashew buying, some in agriculture, some in steel, uh, businesses that is metal and all. Um, we have other investors from India who are working in Ghana and uh, the relationship in this circumstance has been very cordial for years. Why is it so? It is because our political climate in Ghana in the sub-region yeah. of Africa is very stable. We have moved from one government to the other from 1992 to present. There has not been any uh, military junta, therefore any investment that any investor makes in Ghana is secured. The judiciary system is very perfect, it is free and fair, and it does not discriminate against foreigners. So all investment is secured and that is a particular arena that investment investors are looking for and that has caused these Indians of about 10,000 to go and invest in Ghana and we are looking for more yeah. most of the gold that you see in India today are imported from Ghana about 80% of our export from Ghana to India gold, gold. Besides that, we have agricultural products that also come here. Yeah. We have cash nuts, we have cowpea, and others that are imported from Ghana to India. And Ghana in turn also buy some materials from India. Uh, we buy steel for our railway construction in yeah. terms of infrastructure. As of now, we can talk of Kopu Swami and others from Mumbai who are investing in um, railway uh, infrastructure in Ghana and there are other businesses that other Indians are also doing in terms of construction. True. Construction, building construction and then road construction as well. In terms of IT, we have um, some Indians, you know Indians, you are very perfect in uh, information technology yeah. so Indians are also there we have Indians that have established uh, uh, schools in Ghana there is this school called Delhi uh, preparatory school at Tema which is in greater Accra region yeah. and then we have another computer school set up by an Indian at East Legon in Accra so the relationship between us cut across all sectors. In terms of bilateral relationship, the Indians are firmly rooted in Ghana and they are working without any hindrance. Today that we have this AFCFTA, yeah. which ensures that, which is also headquartered in Ghana, which ensures that all production or products made in any African country, the export of same to another African country. You enjoy free tariffs and all. Yeah. Uh, we are using all these opportunities to invite more investors to come and invest in Ghana, not only from India, but Indians who have partners from other countries can also uh, cooperate with them to come and do this investment in Ghana. I know by Ghanaian culture, we are very affable. 
so plain and sincere and we can accommodate every investor either at law or culturally at home. Uh, as His Excellency is very positive that uh, India and Ghana bilateral relationship is improving in a very fast manner. Uh, specific lot of Indians are very keen to go there to do the business and uh, as His Excellency has already suggested, the security of your investment uh, is always there in Ghana because of the stable political scenario. Uh, the adaptability of the G Ghana government and Ghana people uh, and uh, that's why actually the Ghana is definitely a most popular country uh, in Africa. So a lot of people, those who want to come there and they want to establish their career uh, in the specific fields also. Uh, His Excellency, uh, as we talk about the various sector uh, businesses, there is huge potential in many other sectors also, like specifically if you talk about the agriculture, tourism, education, uh, mining. Uh, talking about sir, agricultural segment, so uh, India is also an uh, agricultural country and 60% of the population of India is staying in the rural area and also participate in the various agriculture related uh, businesses. I just want to know about what exactly the opportunities sir maybe you would like to suggest to our agricultural businessmen, those who want to come there in Ghana and uh, start businesses in agro related products, agro machinery. So I, we just want to know about that, sir. Thank you so much. Um, Ghana largely is agrarian. Yes. And we have these opportunities in agriculture where we cultivate cocoa, cash nuts, coffee. But coffee is in a smaller scale, cocoa in a very large scale. Uh, but for cocoa, Ghana stands as the second largest producer. Okay. Uh, it comes after Cote d'Ivoire. For years back, Ghana used to be number one producer of cocoa. Oh. Yes. And uh, we use the cocoa to manufacture chocolate. Yes. In Ghana, the Ghana's chocolate is the best of the world. Uh, you go to Dubai and then you meet some material they call chocolate, you taste it. As a Ghanaian, when I taste it, I don't see it as chocolate. Oh, I see yeah. it as sugar and some other substance that, the have best, been, best yes, yes. that have been put together. So the best chocolate comes from Ghana because oh. our cocoa is the best cocoa. Besides that, it is Cote d'Ivoire that comes. Um, we produce a lot of cash notes and these cash notes, the uh, Indians patronize all these cash notes. They buy and bring them down here. We need presently to have some kind of value addition to these cash notes and the cocoa that we do, we produce over there. And that will call for some form of machinery. Yes. In terms of the production itself, we demand that we have agricultural machinery to assist in the production so that we can produce in a very large scale and the returns will be very big to help us to help the uh, gross domestic product yeah. to go up. And that will bring a lot of employment opportunities in that particular sector. Uh, we are used to this traditional system of farming. Yeah. So if we get mechanization, we mechanize the system, it is going to help a lot. We are also in the same field of agriculture producing rice. Rice, okay. Rice, maize, millet that you produce over here, we also produce it. But if we are to benefit from mechanization, then it means that we can do it better. Okay. In Ghana, uh, we have 16 regions. You talk of um, each region has its own potential in terms of agriculture. If you speak of Ashanti, Bono, and Western region, you'll be talking of cocoa production okay. and coffee production because that is the forest setting area. And then if you talk of the Northern region, they have five regions in all. 
they are in for production of rice, millet, I should say cereals in general. Then the coastal belt, that will be talking of um, protection and preservation of marine environment. Okay. So that our fish stock, aquatic life, all will be sustained. So that we can have sustainable um, development in terms of this marine env environment. All this will help us to generate some form of employment where the teaming youth that presently are unemployed will get the opportunity also to work. And that will lessen the burden on government. Yeah. Uh, if you are talking of traditional system of farming or traditional way of railing animals, then one will be thinking that it belongs to the old people. Yeah. But where we bring in machinery and we are doing proper agricultural machinery system of farming, then it will attract the youth. So, one goes to school to study agricultural science and he thinks that after doing agricultural science, learning agricultural science, he has to work at the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. and not to go into farming. True. But if the system is changed a bit, it will help. So we are inviting investors to come into this particular sector. We have a very big tract of arable land available in all the regions that I have mentioned, okay, where one will not find it difficult at all to assess a parcel or parcels of land for purposes of agriculture. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is available to assist, to cooperate with the traditional chiefs to get land for investors who are interested in going to uh, 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 agriculture for us to assist them in that direction. Then we speak of mining in particular. Yeah. Mining is a particular area that generates a lot of money yeah. to government. In Ghana, the resource in this circumstance spans from gold, bauxite, copper, aluminum, uh, diamond, yeah. uh, nickel, iron, and all others. But largely, largely, we we'll have to do reasonable mining, yeah. where after mining we can um, do recovery of the land so that the land will rejuvenate, will rehabilitate the land. And all this will have to go for capital investment, yeah. a cause for in, improvement in the system of working True. for purposes of mining. Indians largely when they come to Ghana, they don't go into mining, but rather they go into purchasing of gold. Mm -hmm. We are inviting you this time that you come. You invest. Yeah in mining by coming up with machinery. Yeah. But you can only do so in terms of large scale mining. Okay. Small scale mining is reserved. That is the preserve of the indigents, only for Ghanaians. So you can partner with a Ghanaian to do large scale mining. A Ghanaian that has large scale concession, you can partner with that person and then, or that company, and have it done properly. And we expect that you do mining by not destroying our rivers. As a particular country, the people of that country have come to plunder our land and have destroyed our river bodies, which we are seeking to put in shape. Yeah. But we expect that you Indians, when you come in with your heavy And needs to be yes. taken care of. Yeah. Yes, the environment should be taken proper care of, and you do not destroy our forests. You only act in terms of what your license detects that you should do. Sure. We should also talk of, in terms of all this, we should also be talking of transport. Yes. Yes. We need transport. Transport in this circumstance uh, spans from real transport. We talk of road. The railway lines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We talk of road transport by using buses and all that. Uh, that opportunity is also available. The road development? The road development. Yes, yeah, road development is also available. And we expect you to invest in all that direction. Every sector that I have spoken about, from Ministry of Agriculture to uh, mining. Road, 
mining and all. They all have sector ministers. Yeah. So those who are interested to invest in that, those fields, if they should contact this mission, we will link up with our main mission, ministry in Accra and they will lead them to the sector ministries and the uh, authorities involved will see to it that it is properly worked out. The final authority does not rest with us over here, but it is in Accra. And I'm saying this that I wouldn't want to be misquoted anywhere, so, that I am saying that when you come, I can help for you to get this opportunity done, but it is done in Ghana. Uh, see, his uh, excellency is very clear and uh, so we are very happy to listen that there are so many opportunities for the uh, Indian businessmen all across different states. Uh, as we discussed, the agriculture is the segment actually is for the cocoa, uh, huge potential as Sir has rightly said, the cashew nuts. Apart from that, the for the rice and the machinery, specifically the machinery exporters from uh, India, for the agro machinery, those who are very keen uh, to uh, for the processing of uh, all these products. Uh, so there is a huge potential for such kind of uh, manufacturing of machinery of agro industry, processing industry. There is a potential and uh, the G Republic of Ghana is looking for such kind of investment in future and even the exporters of such machinery. Apart from that, we also discuss about the mining industry, the mining of gold, diamond, aluminium. So the huge opportunities, uh, but the only request uh, to many of our Indian colleagues, those who want to go there and think, but they should not think about the uh, uh, small, scale, uh, small scale mining, but the large scale, where actually the capital investment is a very important uh, criteria and uh, without uh, damaging the environment because the, the businessmen of mining if they really want and keen to go ghana that they should think about uh, a capital investment at the same time the rules regulation about the environmental defined by the ministries uh, has to be maintained uh, so uh, potential is there at the uh, same time, we are very happy to listen, sir, that the environmental aspects has been keenly observed by Ghana government. And this is the need of uh, ours to specifically. Uh, so I would just uh, want to know about the education sector, actually, because education is very important sector. And India has uh, such a large universities of education from the uh, MBA, engineering, medical, pharma, and many, many others. Um, so many educationists actually definitely keen for uh, African countries and Ghana is one of the best countries in Africa. Uh, so what do you suggest for our educationists actually if they want to have the universities, uh, schools or the colleges? Uh, so what do you think, what is should be the potential for such kind of uh, educationists to come there and um, have uh, good education facilities there in Ghana? In terms of education, education, Ghana doesn't have much of a problem. Uh, we have our system where one completes class six and then moves to junior secondary school. And then from the junior secondary school, you go to senior high school. After the senior high school, you move to the university. Uh, officially, Ghana has, the government has five universities. Okay. Um, University of Ghana, which is in Accra, University of Cape Coast, which is in Cape Coast, then Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, which is in Kumasi, then we have um, Buzia University, which is also in Tamale, and then sorry, Buzia University, which is in Brong Ahafo. Okay. Uh, it is popularly called University of Energy. Besides that, we have 10 regional polytechnics. Okay. Yes, these polytechnics today, are, they've been turned into universities. Okay. So they are 10 in number, technical universities. So when you add them to the original five, you will talk of 15 universities. The technical universities, the essence of uh, the existence is to uh, 
serve as learning a particular trade of some sort. And that's why we call them technical. Um, besides all that, we still have some Ghanaians who do not school in Ghana. Okay. But because of our relationship, they come here either on scholarship or on their own. They come to India either on scholarship or on their own yeah. to study. So that relationship is also there between India and Ghana. We have various students who are studying over here, pursuing various courses. But one particular course that since my arrival in India that I have found it to be very difficult for uh, products who leave India, Ghana students over here who complete and go to Ghana and cannot practice, mm -hmm. is the pharmacy course. Pharmacy. Because pharmacy in Ghana today, when you pick it up, you are either do, do reading M farm or farm D. Before. But in India, some of the schools, it is only B farm. Yeah. And after B farm, if you go back to Ghana with that certificate, you cannot practice. Right. The uh, pharmaceutical council will not even give you the opportunity for you to sit for the entrance exams, okay. for you to come out as a pharmacist, okay. a qualified pharmacist to practice. So I use this particular medium to state that uh, the schools and the authorities should look at it critically to consider foreign students that come here to read B farm to upgrade their standard to that of M farm or farm D. Okay. So that they can pursue it. All this all said and done, uh, we are we have not closed our doors to investors who want to invest in the education sector. Okay. Those who are willing to come to uh, partner us in terms of education. Uh, various universities are available and they are willing to partner them in terms of particular courses, uh, exchange programs that can go on between some universities with respect to some courses. Okay. Law, for instance, those who are reading uh, law can also come here to, because we are all Commonwealth um, Members. Okay. Members. And for that matter, our history, uh, there are not much enough differences in terms of being members of Commonwealth. Sir, apart from education, the uh, tourism industry, travel and tourism, the uh, Ghana is a lush green forest. Uh, the huge uh, number of different kind of animal, lions and elephants and many, many other uh, uh, animals is available actually, uh, where actually the people can go and see and enjoy that beauty of nature. Uh, so I just want to know ki what exactly the opportunities you see uh, so that the numbers can increase from India to Ghana in terms of tourism, because this is all also related to the hospitality industry also. The hotel industry uh, can uh, come there for the good uh, hotels. The food industry, because ultimately when the tourism increase, the food likings also happen. Uh, so in that case, uh, any specific arrangements maybe uh, Ghana government is looking for. Uh, I'm asking specifically for the Indian tourist, because uh, India is now the uh, number one in terms of population now, crossing behind China just two months back. And there we just want to know uh, what exactly is uh, your uh, point of view uh, for the tourism industry to increase the footfall from India. Of tourism, Ghana is very high. We have a lot of tourist centers. Uh, we have the monkey sanctuary okay. in the... I think a variety of monkeys are available in Ghana, what I heard about. <laughs> Types. We have monkey sanctuary in the Brown East region at Nkranza district. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of monkeys over there. And there are a lot of monuments at such places too. Some caves oh. that you may think they are created by man. Oh. But by nature, if you, you see it. 
and there are also some river bodies that are flowing from some mountains oh. mountains and some rocks and they move from one stage to the other so a lot of fountains yes so so it gets to the valley oh right so it is at that valley that people go to swim mm -hmm. and the water will be coming from the top oh yes and then you go to uh, Kakum. There is a place called Kakum in central region near Cape Coast. All these areas are tourist areas. But we have forest zone to where we have these elephants. And we have some wild animals over there like lion yeah. and others. And uh, in a proper description terminology you will say that some of them are in in situ, mm -hmm. in situ in the sense that they have been conserved. Their habitat has been protected in a particular manner that the no um, animal or object from another area called a situ can enter there to cause havoc or to do any destruction okay. to either of the animals or their habitat and it is not easy to enter but you the forest officials that is the wildlife officials will be in a position game officials will be in a position to guide you where you should stand to have a look at such animals oh. and then we have some fish in some rivers that we do not eat. Okay. They are preserved. They are protected. So uh, when you put uh, a small a loaf of bread into that particular water, you see the fish coming out for the loaf. And then we have some crocodile ponds up north at a place called Paga. Okay. When you go there and you throw a chicken mm -hmm. into the river, Okay. Then they come to swallow it. Oh. As soon as you give one such uh, uh, chicken, the rest will come out just like that. Oh. Be waiting. And then people will have a look at where all these opportunities are there. And then we have old forts and castles where our great grandfathers were detained before they were taken abroad. Oh. To America, to UK, and all during the colonial days. Yeah. So all such monuments are there for people to have a look at. And then when they were taken to the fort, some of them were chained. The chains are there, and then you see it. Mm -hmm. That is why some of the African uh, folklore, when we sing, we mention such things in respect of slave trade and all that. They are all there. All of such issues or such uh, monuments will help to generate revenue to the government. And we expect investors also in that direction to help invest in that particular field yeah. for you to win your, 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 recoup your investment out of so that the government can also get few um, cities out of that to help the country to grow. Great. Uh, uh, so friend, tribal tourism is one of the biggest sector now as India has a, such a large population and our Indian tourists are always searching for the new places to see. Definitely earlier the Europe and US was uh, definitely very important uh, points to see. But now in Africa, if we today talking about the Ghana, as His Excellency has suggested, uh, the Indian tourist must uh, think about Ghana as the best destination to visit and explore new things because uh, the nature always matter the lush green forest uh, the crocodile you can see the lions elephant and uh, when the tourism increases in the country uh, indian hotel industry indian food industry has a great opportunity in ghana they can think about investment in the hotel residential complexes uh, also the uh, restaurants also 
so i think this is the big opportunity uh, for our uh, indian tourist also and indian hospitality industry also so we are uh, really happy to see this huge potential in uh, ghana uh, so global india business forum is working closely with most of the african countries and uh, as we uh, started forming the different councils for uh, to grow the uh, business between uh, two countries uh, so we definitely now intend to form the india ghana business and cultural council uh, with the support of uh, you and your embassy and uh, uh, senior uh, counselors uh, so we just uh, have so that we can support the uh, uh, ghana uh, delegations business delegation coming in the various sectors uh, we can also send delegations there uh, the sectors what you suggested so i just want your opinion sir these councils will definitely help and global india business forum is always take initiative to promote the uh, african countries and i think this is the time that uh, republic of ghana should be largely promoted in india for the a uh, big bilateral relationship so your comment on this uh, upcoming uh, uh, business and cultural council by global india business forum sir uh, thank you i think that it is two sides of the coin uh, it will help both sides where there is fairness yeah it will not help both sides where there is no transparency True. so for this to thrive for us to achieve the goals in it then it means that both parties will have to cooperate with each other and then the there should be level playing field where we can have the opportunity to uh, air our views and also air your views and the essence of all this is that this is not just in a vacuum because we do all this in the at the end of the day for the two countries to benefit okay. so if the benefit in this is going to go to only one particular sector or one particular country then it means that it doesn't worth it starting it at all okay. ghana if we are benefiting out of it then we will also assist that we spearhead this particular uh matter for it to succeed yes at the end of the day but where we go in and then at the end of the day we see that uh, we are not getting anything reasonable out of it and it will it will not help us so talking about the uh, the government help actually so what do you ex expect uh, from the government of india to do more for ghana for the improvement of bilateral relationship uh, from indian side uh, good uh, india has done a lot for ghana but like oliver twist you he was always asking for or he asks for more at any particular time uh, india ghana relationship india has assisted us to procure some financial facilities from uh, India as in bank to help us in infrastructure development and we are still asking for more for infrastructure development in terms of giving us soft financial assistance to uh, uh, finance our projects yeah. we have more to do i had earlier alluded to agricultural mechanization and all uh, we have some kind of relationship with asm bank through india government yeah. which is still pending before them uh, we have been to ministry of commerce in terms of this particular uh, and we are asking pleading with the india government that uh, they give the note for as in bank to release the money to us so that we can go ahead with the development so friends uh, as you have just uh, heard about the opportunities in republic of ghana uh, for the uh, mining industry uh, apart from that in the tribal tourism industry uh, 
uh, huge potential uh, in the education industry also, agriculture industry also, even the IT guys also. So overall, if you can see the, the expectations uh, from Ghana side is also that there should not be only the one side should get benefit. But when we are doing the uh, interaction with uh, India-Ghana relationship, uh, both businessmen and both countries needs to be uh, benefited. And ultimately, Global India Business Forum is also of the same vision that whenever we have started the uh, country councils, that both the country businessmen will definitely get the big benefit out of it. And the bilateral relationship, the cultural exchange has to happen in a big way. So we are very happy we are here and uh, such a nice interaction with you and open thoughts from you also. And we are keen to develop a great relationship uh, with Ghana and Global India Business Forum is committed uh, to have that exchange of benefits to both businessmen uh, and the uh, people of Ghana and India together. You are most welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much.